Hi everyone, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. This week I'm joined by JP and we're here to look at the review show and we're going to look at, look at the fixtures that just went by. I suppose JP, we're better to start and Shamrock Rovers won Derry nil. Um, obviously look, I'll just take, I'll take your thoughts on this first of all, Derry are your team and obviously Rovers won one nil, they were at home. Talk us through this one. Well, it was just a matter of um, a case of the the bench for Shamrock Rovers basically basically won won the game for them. Like um, Derry played better than what I I expected us to because I, I expected us to be for the most part uh, soaking up pressure and maybe trying to hit no counter. But fair play to to Rory Higgins and his team. They they took a game to Shamrock Rovers. Um, and Stephen Bradley commented after saying it was nice to have a an away team that actually came to to try and win the game, and that that's exactly what it was. And only for the final ball, um, Derry could have could have easily taken the lead in this game, been a couple of goals up. Um, before uh, Shamrock Rovers got the goal, um, a great save by Alan Manis near the end of the first half to deny Jamie McGonagall at the back post. Probably was uh, much worse save. A couple of chances before that where maybe Derry picked the wrong pass and then when they did pick the right pass it was over hit there, it was miscontrolled and it was just it you just got the feeling that it wasn't going to be your night. Um for seventy minutes Derry were absolutely incredible. Um then Stephen Bradley rung the changes, Danny Mandroy, Graham Burke players yeah. off the bench, like it's it, it, it was incredible. Um and look you you could say what you like about the goal. Maher makes a good save, unfortunately for him. There wasn't enough of pace on the ball um, for him to get it completely out of the danger area. That all he could do was was save it, and Mandroy was there and and tapped it home. And it was it was a really good, really good goal from Sean Grover's point of view. Derry be disappointed that they they let down the Lions run as far as they did. Um, and yeah, and, I was actually I was just going to go on to Danny Lions again. He was up that left hand side and he yeah. cut in and had a shot. Like he was amongst the goals again. Like he obviously helped create the goal and he's mm. having a really good season this season for Shamrock Rovers. He is like and he's playing in that advanced wing back role as well, which probably is beneficial because we've seen like Ronan Boyce as well benefits from from playing that role. Like he he manages to get himself in. And at the back post more often enough, and and get himself a goal or two. Um, but it was a look. I'm not going to take anything away from Shamrock Rovers. You could say Derry deserved a point out of it, but at the end, champions do get the three points when they're not playing well, and that's exactly what Shamrock Rovers done. And they've laid down a marker now to Derry and basically said, "What what have you what have you got?" Um, and look, I have no doubt that Derry will come back from this. They'll bounce back from it. They bounced back from the defeat before. Now, we all knew that at the start of the season, when we were winning them six matches in a row and picking up late goals here and there, that it wasn't going to last, that there was going to come a period in the season where we were going to have to dig deep. And that's like, I think that's a period we're in now. Like, we have two wins in six games or something, but we've only lost one. So so that's the po- positive if you look at it. Shamrock Grover, since they drew 2 2 against Lago, I think they've. 2-2 against Sligo with Tala earlier in the season. They've won every game except the draw against Sligo. So that shows you the momentum at their, the Sligo game and the showgrounds. So that just shows you that the momentum at Durham, that they're really taking taking the league, league by the, the horns here now. And it's, um, it's about whether Derry can, can keep pace with them. And look, if Derry can stay in their coattails over the next three games... Um, and going to the, the the summer break or the the, mm, the, the yeah. mid season break, still within four points, and get into July, get a few bodies in, and then we're into European football. Um, and who who knows what can happen in the second half of the season? But look, fair play to Shamrock Rovers. They won the game. Their keeper kept a minute, and um, that that's what champions do. Yeah, look, Shamrock Rovers were excellent in that game, and you know another very late goal, seventy nine minute. Danny Mandrew got off the bench, came on. They changed their whole midfield, you might as well say. Um, brought on attacking positive players. Like that Shamrock Rovers bench is better than some teams starting 11, you know. like the- When you look at it, they played last Friday night and then they went to Monday and they made seven changes. And then they came to Friday night and they made another seven changes. So just, uh, they take out. You know, they, they can take out, put some down and this still doesn't make them any weaker. And that's, that's a challenge for Derry now. Is can Derry get to that point over the next few years of where they're making changes 
at the mm-hmm. same same rate, then they're not weakened. So you just had to look at the bench, the two benches since Friday night. I know Derry have a few injuries. We've lost Michael and McJanet over the last couple of weeks. We've lost Michael Duffy long term, yeah. Kieran Harkin long term. So um, we are significantly weaker when you look at the bench. It was apart from Kieran Collins, James Ack and Tundy. I think the rest. And Nathan Gerd's side, I think the rest was all under 19. So, um, but look, well done to Shamrock Rovers. They've been a team that have been building over the last five, six years, and they're here at the start of their project. So, um, there's nothing to get downhearted about. Um, if somebody had said to me, start a season after 16 games, you'll be four points behind Shamrock Rovers, then then I would then I would have taken that all day long. And it's just about whether we can keep up the momentum now. Then sure, that we, like you're, you're only one point. You know, Sherman Covers were only one point ahead of you before that match. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, so, like, if you can keep putting pressure on teams, keep getting wins, keep Sherman Covers under pressure, like, mm-hmm. the title race is still 100% on for both of you. I, no one has run away with it. Should we seen for Rovers, what, one or two or three years ago, run away with the league around this period, and yeah. ended up winning it in the end. So, it's, it's still everyone's, it's up there it's to win still. Like, you know, I still, like you said, if, if you were offered second to start of season, you take it. You know, so you have everyone. You have, if you're a dairy fan, you have to be happy. And look, you give Sham Covers a match too. You weren't completely outplayed or anything. Like that. It's just yeah. Rovers' quality on the bench. It's just like you said, just won the game. If you hadn't met and been able to make them changes, it probably would have been a draw. You know, that'd be fair to say. I'd say for from Sham Covers' point of view. And yeah. look, it just shows how strong they are, really. And hopefully, more teams in the league will catch up to them because we need teams. Such as Sterry, such as Dark Bowls, even, you know, we need teams to catch up to their level and improve the whole league, get better players in, just to make the league more entertaining, I think, as well, and having Shamrock Rovers run away with it most seasons. Exactly, but but not only that, we, we need the likes of Pats and Dundalk, we, we, we know we're in transition because the new managers and them Bowls have sort of changed their quite a lot of their team and lost quite a few players, but we, we need teams to catch up, not just to give Shamrock Rovers the, the challenge, but we also need teams they catch up, they give ourselves more matches where we're playing top level matches, you know what I mean? And I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the rest of the league, but for the teams that are in Europe, you need to be playing these type of matches every week. Like because when you go on the, the, the European matches, it's gonna be something similar to what we saw on Friday night. The 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 quality of the game's gonna be the quality of opposition is gonna be really high and, and we need more we we need we need more of these kind of matches they they test our, our teams yeah with. i'm not trying to be disrespectful for anybody that might think i am but i hope they get what i'm trying to say you know what i mean yeah no of course you know like i know i know what you're trying to say like just teams catch up to catch up to rovers level this it just improves the league as a whole and mm. everyone have a stronger team and there'll be more players be more detail for everyone to look at but yeah good stuff from rovers Rovers 1-0 to Derry. Rovers are first 36 points. Derry are second 32 points. Um, I suppose the next one we'll move on to then, JP, is Don't Talk 3, Bows 1. Um, obviously, I-, I watched this one. I was supposed to go, but I wasn't able to go in the end. But um, we were away to Dundalk. And Dundalk's home, fo- home form has been really good this season. But away form, they're like 7 or 8 and the tables are away. So away, they're very different. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, obviously with Bowes we're a mixed bag I think we're 6-6 six and six for home and away so you know it's a mixed bag for us but I suppose JP look very disappointing for us in that one you know to go into the game to play positive at the start to get an early goal in the 15th minute from Kelly you know to pin the knock back a bit play a bit of good football go into half time 1-0 to us after a very good performance the week previous against yourselves Derry and then you know it all just crumbled in the second half didn't it yeah, it, it seemed that way, Daz. Um, really good goal from Bo's point of view. Really well worked corner. Um, yeah. Probably about won. Time, about time that worked out, JP. They've been doing it the last yeah. since that season. <laughs> yeah, look, look like one off the the, tra- the training ground. And Bo's probably like, took the lead last week in the Brandeville and, and drew one each. And mm. probably really disappointed that they, considering that the penalty they conceded in the Brandeville, disappointed that they didn't come away with the win, but probably happy that that they came away with the draw and to take the lead in Oriel, going to half time one nil up, you're probably thinking, right, more of the same boys. Come out, concede early on in the first five minutes. Um Pat Hoban, um, I think did a ticket of deflection. I know one of the goals took a deflection anyway. So he's really disa- probably really disappointed uh 
from that perspective, five minutes in the second half, but from the Dundalk, they're really happy because last week they'd thrown away a two-goal lead away to UCD. Um, and as you touched on, they've a really good home form. Um, don't think they've lost at home this season. Um, somebody can correct me on that. Yeah, I guess their home form is absolutely brilliant. I don't think they have if, either. If, um, their if fortress, I'm wrong, their fortress, like we, regardless, if you've got one or two losses. I don't know off the top of my head, but Dundalk or Fortress at home this season, they're very, yeah. the har- probably one of the hardest teams to go to. I think. Yeah, I and um, like that. That's what they've done over the. That's what they've done over the last ten years. And, Apart from maybe last year, has made made Oriel Park a fortress, and fair play to Stephen O'Donnell. Like he, he's come in there and he's like took a club that was firstly on his knees in comparison to the, the previous seven or eight years, and yeah, he's got them playing really good football, and they're starting to get the results now. I know over the first ten games or something, they they'd only won one game and 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 drew and drew a pile of pile of matches. So um, they're starting to really click now, he's starting to get into gear. Um, and that that was a, a big win for them, especially after the the result last week. Yeah. They were disappointed that they went in one 0 down, but they they really made sure early in the second half that they got themselves right back in it, and that gave them a ground in the end to go the rest of the rest of the game and, and get the win and really well worked second goal, great ball by Keith Ward um, against his former that, team. That was the last, I think that was the last goal. I think both like yeah. that was a brilliant ball by Keith Ward. You know, it came on towards the end and. Yeah, he put through. He absolutely penetrated the defense. Everyone just looking at the ball go through. Just reversed the pass and it was either Donald Benson slipped in behind and in, into the back of the net. Like, and that's what Wardy has in his locker. That's yeah. you. You'd know that. I know that. Obviously, the dog. You know, brilliant. Like, and because the story of both season, letting go of these players, not keeping them. I think, and then, I think the the third goal probably sums up Bowes more. Like, I know the last few weeks they've been starting to get back to the the role sales in terms of. Cutting out the mistakes and not creating silly goals, but the, I think the last goal um, probably summed up what the early part of their season was: was that they couldn't clear their lines, and then when they did clear their lines, they just threw a, a lazy leg at it, and and it goes past the goalkeeper. Um, but look, as I say, the, you know, there's never a positive with a defeat, but I'm sure Keith Long will will try and look at the positives and rectify the negatives. Because to go to Oriel Park and take the lead, it's not easy. Not many teams have done that this season. Well, we we keep we keep going with the teams taking the lead and just throwing it away. Like it's just it's yeah. not good enough for Bowes to play in this season. And a lot of people have been hammering Keith Long and saying Keith Long out. And I firmly do not believe Keith Long out. Like if we no. finish sixth or seventh this season, we should keep Keith Long and build for next season. And I think I think Keith Long's probably a victim of overachieving the last three or four years like and teams are expecting that, that that's now the minimum of what Bose should do and look I'm not trying to tell Bose fans what their, their expectations should be but they, they need to look and see that Derry have Derry have spent massively to improve some paths have already been up there Dundalk are they, they've a new uh, ownership um, Rovers are already made Rovers are already made um, so five. Bose five. and Sligo are re- as well like you don't know what you're going to get from Sligo from one game the next, never mind one year the next. So, um, I'm not, as I say, I'm not trying to tell Bose fans what their expectations should be, but if they can finish in the top five, top six, then for me that would be a really good, a good season and uh, f- for Bose, you know what I mean. So, yes, um, especially on the back of the players that they've lost, if the main thing was that they kept a manager, and if if Keith Long can can rebuild this team, then who knows? Maybe next year, the year after, that they they might be. Uh, back in the top three or four. So look, stick with him. He's a good manager. He knows what he's doing, and um, Bowes will be back. He's a, he's a great manager, and look, this is when the team needs our support more than ever. Like it's terrible with fans yeah. boost the team, and look, it does happen. And look, people have said before that look, we've a right to boost the team. Let them know how we play. Yes, you do, but it's not nice get, to boost the team, though. Because we that... need to get we need to get behind them. Like I think we're in the sixth this season. Look, it's not great from where we've been, but. Look, it's okay. Like we can build on it. Like we're never going to replace George Kelly. We were never going to replace Ross Tierney. We were probably never going to replace Andy Lyons. Then we lost experience in Keith Buckley. Lost experience in Andy Lyons. Was. Experience and whoever else left the team. Really, Joe you know, Breslin was a great player. We let go of him too. It's just very. It's very hard. And look, people have been saying to me that Keith Long made a decision in one or two of them players to not renew his their contracts for whatever reason. And what I'm saying to people is. Right, we are just looking at the mistakes that Keith Long made this season. But look how many good things he's done the last few seasons. No one's talking about that, like you know. And 
I think we need to give keep you know, I just it's hard at the minute. It's a bit annoying at the minute being the Bulls fan that way. It's just stuff like this going on and just in the background and then just going goals up and they're not conceding stupid goals. Like them them goals we could see against them now. Like fair enough to keep our goals good, like when you put it through, like that was good, but the defence just ran ragged. They just let them through. There was no one looking, they were ball watching to let their player get in. And it's been time and time again this season and where does the stop? Um, Keith Long simply needs to get players in, in the summer and get rid of one or two, I think. Um, get rid of one or two with JP. We actually can't afford to get rid of anyone. We need everyone. Um, we, like, you know, you got Pack and playing left back sometimes, so he's okay. Like, but I think we need better. Do you know, I, I, and as you said, fixing <coughs> overachieving, I'm expecting better than maybe where we should be at because, you know, all the external things. But look, it's just. It's been hard. It's disheartening. Look, I, I, I've been there over the, the, the last 10 years as a Derry fan where we've built a good team for over a period of two years and then all of a sudden it gets ripped apart with with other teams in the league coming and, and taking, taking your better players. And yeah. Well, the worst thing you can do is maybe get on the, the manager's back um, or the no. player's back because... Keelan's, Keelan's class. You know, um, the we've been there. We've chopped and changed managers and now, now we've got a really good manager who's, get, who's been backed by a really good owner or chairman, I should say. Um, and look, brighter things are always around the corner. Um, the last thing you want to do is get rid of somebody who, who knows the club inside out and um, knows the players, sign these players. Just give them a chance, give them a chance to get the, this right. This season could be all about sustaining in the top five, top six, that for Bose, I know that they finished in the top three, four over the last three four, months or so, like that. You, you know what I mean? So, and that's why the expectations are high. Um, and look, if he can consolidate this year up at the, the top half of the table again, keep the squad together, build on it next year, um, and just have confidence in him. He, he'll get yeah. it right. He'll get it right again. As well as that, JP, look, there's still a second half of the season to go. There's still exactly. a summer window. There's a lucky long can they still do. We can still, if we don't finish in the top four or five, it's not a disaster. It's not terrible, you know. Well, it's not great from where we have been, but it's not, you know, he does not a sackable offence. Like, you know, we should stick oh, with him. Yeah. He's got a chance to bring players in, get rid of a few players, maybe bring in a few loan players from England, through free agents floating about, bring them in, see what we can do. But look, it is what it is, and that's where we're at at the minute. And... If we finish sixth, look, I'll accept it, and hopefully next season will be better. And yeah, look, hopefully next season will be better. Like you know, it's just a lot of things went down. We, we could probably talk all day about balls alone, let alone the match. You know, there's so much to talk about with balls at the minute. I suppose the next one. Uh, well, just before we go, um, Dundalk are currently in third position. The balls are in sixth, so Dundalk, I think, are about six or seven points behind Derry. So yeah. it was a still, really good... still on your back, but they're not. You know, they're still a bit away as well, so. It's a really good one for Dundalk because I, I touched on this in the, the preview show that this is a chance for Dundalk. They, they open up a gap between, like, yeah. Dundalk were playing Bows and Slag were playing Pats. So it was an opportunity for for Dundalk and Pats to open up a gap between the, the chase and two. Like, we know that over the last 10 years or, or more that um the, the fourth place has been good enough to get Europe because the cup winners have come from the top three. So yeah. the likelihood is that could happen again, but we know the FAA Cup draw could go anyway. And anybody from outside the top three could win the FA Cup, but the main thing is to get that fourth fourth spot and give yourself a chance of give it. A chance, yeah. A chance of it. So that was a chance for Dundalk took their chance by beating Bose. Um, I know we'll talk about Pats and Sligo uh, in in a few moments. And look, it was a really good win for Dundalk, especially after throwing away the two goal lead last week in, in UCD, which compounded their their away form. So coming back from a one nil. Down at half time to score exactly. three goals, second half, brilliant, brilliant. Exactly. So they've, they've took their chance to open up that gap between themselves and, and the chase and pack for the for um the the European spots. And by doing that, they've closed the gap between themselves and Derry in second spot. And that that's who they play next week in the in the Brandywell. So that that's going to make that's going to add a wee bit more spice to that game. That the fact that mm. a, a win for Dundalk and they would only be four points behind Derry, and everybody's talking about. Derry and Rovers being chasing the, the title and, and Dundalk and Pats and whoever else are, are battling for Europe and, and Pats will not or sorry, Dundalk will be will be looking they they lay down a marker in that game. So really good win for them and um looking forward to 
the, the next game in the brand though. Absolutely. Um, I suppose the next one we want to is Shells one draw at a nil. Um, obviously, look, firstly, it's a great three points for Shelburne, a clean sheet. Sean Boy getting on the goal, the goal sheet, you know. Um, draw at a nil would be a bit panicky. I think a bit worried, you know. The three point was it? Yeah, the three points off ninth. Um, at the minute they're currently in eighth position on the table, with thirteen points, and halves are breathing down their neck. But ten points, you know, it's literally only three points. Isn't it for them to be back down on that bottom two when that's not where they want to be? Shells be delighted with that three points. It's after giving them up to eighteen points now. I suppose, um, you know, JP. I suppose we'll start with the goal. Obviously, the ball was crossed in, not even from the wide position. It was crossed in from what the right to the edge of the box of the Sean Boyd, and he just there's no one on him. The mm. draw the defenders were just ball watching every single one of them. Acres of space gets up and it's a trademark header for Sean Boyd into the back of the net. Like that's clueless, terrible defending from Jota. Like that's that's what has them down there, really, isn't it? <clears throat> well, he, he done well. Like he, he peeled off Keith Cowan and he got in between Cowan and, and and the the right back. Um, he, he peeled off and he was fine with a, a great cross. I think was it Shane Farrell found him with the cross. Um, yeah, the fifty one minute. Yeah. Um. So it was a really good goal in terms of like from a Shelburne point of view. As you say, the Drogheda will probably look at it and say they, they could have defended it better, could they have stopped the cross coming in in the the first the first place? But look, it's the first back to back victory for Shelburne at all this this season. Like they, it's been yeah. so, so far this season, it's been one step forward and maybe three steps back for them. And Damon Duff will and Joey O'Brien they they'll be delighted that they've got the three points because they've opened they they would they probably would have been looking at the the Finn Herbson UCD game and, and thinking that they probably would have been looking at that and thinking, um, if we if we don't win this, we, we'll be right in the right in the mix. And what they've done is they've they've created yeah. they've created an eight point gap between themselves in ninth place, um, and I think they they play Pats next week, so the, it'll take them into that game in, in really good form. Um, for Drogheda, it's a like they they started the season, um. On up and down, they up went. Down. They were okay, like you know, they're kind of what we thought would they would be, but lately they went, now they're taking the foot off the gas a little bit. And they've done a six match unbeaten run. Yeah, they've now lost four in a row, um, and that's it's quite worrying. Um, but for them, for them, they they'll know that next week's a big one, a big one for them. Um, but a bit disappointed that they lose this game. But but for Shelburne point of view, from what we've saw. Um, Shelburne deserved to win. They gave Sligo a really good game last week on Toka Park. Could have won by more. But and the main thing is that they've they've got three points as back to back wins. And for them, they they were looking at the table now and thinking, can we get ourselves in the the, the top half of the table? Because they're only a point yep. behind. Bulls. They're only two behind Sligo. So as you, as we said earlier, still more than half a season to go. So any team that puts together a run can really like. Finish anywhere in this. That, that could have them up to fifth place then. Obviously, they're not, I'm not sure with goal lifting, but that could have Shelburne potentially up to fifth place then, you know, if, mm. if results go their way. I suppose JP as well, you have to give credit to, to Damien Duff. He's Shelburne playing attacking football now. He's stuck yeah. to it, three at the back. He didn't change that. He's stuck to it. Yeah. And it looks like it's starting to work now. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Like we, we've often commented over the, the course of the, the early part of the season that the they weren't creating a lot, that they were more like trying to contain teams and maybe hit them on the counter. And um, we we couldn't see basically where they were going to get goals from. Um, they weren't even creating clear cut chances. Um, at one point, and over the last few weeks, they they've seemed to have rectified that that they're now actually creating creating good chances. And all right, they're they're not prolific when they're taking them, but what they're doing is they're they're getting over the line in games, and they've done that against Sligo. They've done it now against Drogheda. Um, and t- the disappointing thing for them is they they've lost twice. They they found Harps, so that that that'll be a disappointing thing. That's something yeah. that they'll want to yeah. rectify as a, later on in the season. But as you say, Duff has stuck to his principles. Um, he's stuck stuck with a back three, back five, whatever way it is. Mm. He's, yeah. cre- he's he's created a more attacking ethos as the season has gone on, and they're now starting to reap the benefits. But I think you have to. Credit him for for putting Brendan Clark back in goal. He brought in a young keeper from Swansea. Started with him. Obviously, 
he had he he's brought him in on loan. He didn't just bring him on, bring him in and his recovery. He had to give him a chance. It didn't work out. He's gone back to experience with Brendan Clark, and it seems to have it seems to have paid off because all right, Clarky he might not be making huge saves, but what he does is he knows how to calm a defence down. He breeds confidence in the defence, and then that allows experience. That that it's experience, and then that allows that, that takes the shackles off and allows players maybe to, to express themselves further up the pitch. That they're not yeah. having to sit, they're not having to sit with a back five. That the the two wing backs can get themselves forward and um be confident that the the back three and plus Brendan Clark can can, can dig them out and look. I'm I'm not running down the, the the guy. Sorry, forgive me. I forget his name. That's come in from Swansea. Um, I'm not running him down because he is quite young. Um, I, don't, I think it's his name, is it? And he's here to learn the game and stuff like that. And but unfortunately, football's a results business, and you need your best players on the pitch at the best when when you're facing um, tough challenges. And that's what Damien Duff done. He, he brought in his experienced goalkeeper, and it, it's paying off. Yeah, I think so. I think you should stick with um, Clark. You know clean sheet as well that's great for them I know Draw didn't make too many chances but like you said solid in goals no mistakes sure defence confidence calm you know everything you kind of want in a keeper and you know you start putting the run clean sheets together you start climbing up the table really and, and that, you know, that's the thing like I've seen Draw a couple of times this year and um, as a, from the highlights really there on Friday night uh, Sam Long you call him the goalkeeper for Draw looks yeah. really really good shot stopper he does. He does. Unfortunately, too. Unfortunately for him, he seems to be having to save quite a lot of shots. Um, but I'm sure he, he probably would have known that when he came in that, that that that's what he was going to be up against. And he looks to be a really good shot stopper. Yeah. Um, and like as I say, for Drogheda, disappointing that they've lost their last four. But the next game's a big one for them it's next week. So it is. Yeah. Um, so that's so Shelter at 7 with 18 points and Drotter is with 13 points. Drotter really need to turn it around because they're gonna, you're gonna go on the Harps and UCD now. And Harps are ninth place with 10 points, and UCD are 10th place with 8 points. Obviously, like you said, Harps picked up the two wins against what's well, the two wins against Shelburne, and whatever it was, but you know, 10 points. Now, this is a huge game for these teams. Uh, JP at the bottom of the table, obviously, Kerrigan. Got UCD a huge fight with three points very late on in the game. Um, I believe UCD you are in control of the game for large spells. They were attacking Finn Harps. Finn Harps were sitting in deep. They were soaking the pressure up. And look, Carrigan just got in. They took his chance, got the goal. Unfortunately, there's no highlights out at the time of recording this video. I watched Harps fan TV that O'Sheen um, is doing on his channel. And I was listening to a few of their thoughts. And there wasn't too many Harps fans that night, JP. Too many happy, too many happy fans that night. I mean, no. Um, this was a really surprising result. Now I have been saying over the last few weeks that there's a result, a, a win round the corner for UCD because they've been putting in really good performances. Like they, they drew with, they almost got over the line against some Pats. They drew with Sligo away from home. They come back from two down against Draha, or sorry Dundalk. They draw two two. I didn't think they'd win this because I thought Van Harps at home would have really like not passed up the opportunity. They open up a gap between themselves and UCD, but they have. Um, for Van Harps' point of view, it's really disappointing. Um, right. From listening, from chatting to Osh, um, Oshin, um, they sat with a back five. Now a back five is okay if whenever you've got the ball, it becomes a back three and you, you push your full backs on. Yeah. According to him, it did, that didn't happen. They sat and they tried to invite it. UCD on them. UCD were the better team. Um, and I did see the goal was a great ball in the box. It's on quite similar to the Shelburne goal, really. Yeah. Ball in the box. Kerrigan gets in between two defenders and heads it past the goalkeeper. And um, look, fair play to UCD. Like they, they knew there was probably last chance saloon for them. And basically, because if they'd lost this, it was probably a matter of. Of just season over nearly, you know, season uh, close, season 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 relegation close. probably confirmed even before the halfway point. What they've done is they've given themselves an absolute fighting chance now. Um, Absolutely. Going into the, the second half of the season, um, as we approach the second half of the season, sorry, doesn't get any easier for them because they, they play Shama Grovers next week, but that's a new city bowl. Um, and um, as I say, as I said, and I've been saying it on the show, that there's a result around the corner for UCD at 
and there was um, against Finn Harps when they absolutely really needed it. They've put themselves now within two points of Finn Harps, within five points of Drogheda, and, and they'll be looking at this and thinking, right, if we can stay within, if we can stay within that bracket now, and, and maybe pick up another win here there where we're not expected to. Um, in terms of they'll be as I said before, they'll be expecting they go into games, they'll be expecting right, we we can get some out of this game. But most people will not be giving them a chance to get something out of the game. So it's all about believing in yourselves in the camp. Um and look from from the outside looking in, for both camps it seems to be really positive for UCD, really negative for Finn Hurst, but you can you can get why it, why it isn't it's exactly negative. yeah, you can get why for the, for both teams. Like there's no expectations in UC to stay up. Let's be let's be real, they're a college team. They're all going to leave. Their best players are going to go. They're a college team. Like, yeah. Expectations are all in Harps to get points to win. Like they should have won that game realistically. If looking at every team in the league, to have to be looking at UCD going, this is absolutely three points. We have to win these. Like there's no, there's no yeah. draw. Have to win these. And yeah. like as a as a touched on there when we we're talking about the Shelburne game, is um, Shelburne will be disappointed that they have dropped six points to Finn Harps, and then you look at Finn Harps, will be thinking, hey, we've picked six points up against Shelburne, but on the flip side, they've dropped four to UCD. So that's why they're still that's why they're still in trouble. Um because they've dropped four points to UCD. UCD fair play them, they're really good football inside. They came up, they they, they beat a they beat Waterford, they get up like let's not forget that. They they beat Waterford and Bray. They get up in the Premier Division, so they they're, they're no uh, they're no dozers and they've got experienced players like Liam Kerrigan's played in the Premier Division before, Sam Todd's played in the Premier Division before. Um and then like Colin Whelan, it took him a while to get on the score sheet and he, he's now doing that. Um and I uh, know he didn't get on the score sheet. I suppose if but, Colin Whelan was on, say, a Bulls team, he'd probably yeah. have a good few more goals. I think this season, if he was on Dodok, Derry, anyone else, I think, yeah. no disrespect to UCD, I think we'd be seeing a different Colin Whelan. We'd, we'd be seeing. Yeah. He'd be getting not, more service. He's not he'd getting the chances there. this season that he would have got last season. To actually, yeah, exactly. Getting to go score positions. I do hope though for a UCD perspective, unless they, unless they go to Bulls, of course. You know, yeah. it'd be terrible now to see UCD put a good few performances and climb up over Harps and then yeah. lose Colin Whelan, lose Kerrigan, yeah. lose Awesome, lose Todd, lose all these good players. And it happened them the last time they were in the Premier Division, like they were I think that, they the second true. bottom going into the summer window when Rovers took all of a sudden players, they took Scalesy and they took and they took um Connor Davis. It was just teams. Connor Davis and for Uge had they took as well, you know. So teams just came and nitpicked their their squad and then all of a sudden they they, they were left um, and look, it's gonna happen again. Do you know, uh, it, it's gonna happen, and uh, Andy Myler probably knows that. And it, it's a, it comes with the territory of the UCD job. Is that you could build a team, get promoted, and then have nothing. By the time you get promoted, by the time you get promoted, the the squad that you've built is going to be picked apart because of their scholarships or whatever is, is finished yeah. and, and stuff like that. So look, if they can get just get that win. Um, get themselves up above Finn Harps uh, and as we say we know come the summer that they're probably going to be picked apart um, in yeah, terms look, of, their, like, of their squad but can they we, can they find players that maybe be be, be willing to, to play for UCD um, you never know like you really don't no I, mean, I think as well as that I'm not sure what the UCD system at the minute because it changes some point to time but I do believe you need to be in the college to be playing for UCD at the minute so if they're players are cherry picked away I don't think anyone else is going to be coming in I mm. do hope though you know, with, with respect to UCD they're a great football on side to have in the league they're brilliant to watch and all entertaining to watch a nice ground to go to as well but yeah. realistically I like to have a Finn Harps brings more to the league than the UCD team but look, that's a conversation for another day I do well, that's, a, a, that's the argument that I always always come up against that I, I always defend UCD for what they don't bring to the league they give you for what they don't bring to the league, they make up for it and what they do. If you take over the years that we could have lost Georgie Kelly, Sam Todd, Robbie Benson, Greg Sloggett, all them types of players, we could have lost them players for good if you said he weren't in the, the, the League yeah. of Ireland. Because what they've done is they've allowed them players to continue playing football at a semi professional level while studying where if you said he weren't in the League of Ireland it was quite possible that them players would have drifted and went in the intermediate football and then we'd never have seen them again. Like there, Georgia Kelly finished up with Derry on their 19s, went to UCD, studied, 
done a couple of years there, moved to Dundalk, moved to Pat, moved to Bowes. Now he's in the championship with Rotherham, having scored the one and goal. goal, 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 goal. What a dream. Brilliant. Brilliant. If it wasn't for UCD, Georgie Kelly may never have gotten to, the, to, to that point. So I don't like when people say, oh, they, they bring more to the league than a certain team. Because what they lack and what they bring to the league, they make up for and what they do. Absolutely. Look, that was Harps and UCD. Harps are ninth again, tenth and ten points. UCD are last eight points. Um, last game then that we're going to review uh, was on Saturday. It was Sligo one, Pats one. Um, Sligo fifth in the league with only one points, and Pats are fourth in the league with only five points. Very even game, I believe. Um, yeah. The Pats were the better side in the first half. Um, you know, it probably didn't Sligo really. You know, they probably didn't deserve to be down a goal. Um, you know, it was a good finish by Keane. Um, Look, Sligo going to the game in the last few minutes. I didn't really see uh, highlights of this game, and it's going by what a few people um, told me. Um, but look, I think this one out of them all, probably Harps, maybe Harps used to but probably had you know a draw kind of look written on it in a way. What was your thoughts on this one? Well, apologies that I haven't seen no no highlights of this game, so can't really really comment on. But from a few comments I've seen that it was nip and tuck it. Pats are disappointed that they they didn't come away come away with the win, but the main thing is that they didn't lose and they haven't they haven't lost any more ground to them themselves in Sligo. Like um, Sligo point of view, they'd be probably disappointed at home that they didn't pick up the win, especially after taking taking a lead, and they'd be delighted to see uh, Adam Keena getting back on the score sheet again. Um, and for them, it's just about trying to stay in touch with Dundalk and and some Pats. They had a really good start. You're thinking maybe can they can they be the team that would chase Derry and Shama Grovers? They sort of drifted off over the last ten ten games or so. Um, but for them now, it's just about trying to stay on the coattails of uh, some Pats and Dundalk, and they're only four points behind as we approach the the halfway season, well, halfway uh, point of the season. Um, but look, two really good teams um, fighting for the, the the same achievements, um, and. Both were probably relatively, both be relatively disappointed that they they couldn't couldn't win the game, but they they'd be happy that they didn't lose either. Yeah, definitely. And look, only four points separates these two teams as well. And you know, the forms of both have been up and down. Um, yeah. Pat playing some good football this season, so well, good attacking football. Um, you know, so yeah, that that's where they're at at the minute. They both made table, but took that fourth place, like you said, is vital. I think Pat will be happy. To finish in around there, like you said, it's going to give them that opportunity for the cup. It should have happened, you know, should a top team get it. But look, they're not going to want to rely on that, they're going to want to push for that third. And look, they're a very hard team to beat in their day. And if they keep tipping away, getting points, and you know, going under the radar a bit, getting a few wins here and there and draws, they could find themselves up in third. Um, but you know, that Dundalk team is sitting there nicely, it's going to be hard to move them out of the way. Started to click now, haven't they, really? Dundalk. Yeah, absolutely. Look, JP, that was absolutely excellent. Um, please let us know your thoughts below. Um, let us know how your team went, especially if you're Sligo or a Pats fan, because we both didn't really get to see that one. Um, let us know your thoughts in bowl season so far, where you think they should be at. And yeah, thanks for watching the video and like and subscribe if you're new. Thank you.